Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on the mic here, coming at you with a brand new episode of the Jeff Grossman Coaching Dynasty here on NCAA 14 using that college football revamp, of course. We got a really good one in store for you guys today. We are going to find out real quick where we stand within the Mountain West Conference. We are taking on, of course, the Boise State Broncos to start this episode off. And we, of course, are going to go with Boise State. But you know what? Never doubt the, the military academies. They play discipline. They play tough. We are always, you know, those types of teams that come down fighting. But... That being said, though, we got a tough game in store for us. Boise State, on paper, looks significantly more talented. B minus overall squad, B offense, B minus defense. We, on the other hand, we're just a C overall team. C minus offense, C plus defense. We need that defense to come through, by the way. It's going to be real important for us to go ahead and try and take care of business. If we want our first conference championship since 1998, as we take a look at what Boise State's been through, they beat FCS East convincingly, but lost big against Washington, 31-3. Meanwhile, we're 2-0 right now, but I don't think we've played our best game yet. I don't think it's happened just quite yet. But with that being said, let's go ahead and see if we can do just that. Let's see if we can make it happen. So let's go ahead and see if we can go 2-0 once again in this episode. And... If you think we can, make sure you hit that like button. Hit subscribe as well if you got to be brand new. And with that being said, let's go ahead, get on that field. First row game of this dynasty, man. Let's get it. All right, guys. So it's one thing to look okay against an FCS squad or even look good against a Utah State. But now we got the class of this conference at, on the road too, man. We're not in the confines of Colorado Springs. Taking on these Boise State Broncos, man, we got a really interesting one, to be honest with you guys. And really, their special teams is not doing any favor for us. They pin us deep, so if we want to score on this drive, our first drive of this ball game, we're going to have to come through here and try to get a bunch of junk plays, you know, get a bunch of big plays downfield, long drives even. But right now, facing a third and ten already. We'll see if we can convert this one as Daniels will have to drop back and pass. Trying to find our tight end, but we didn't put enough on that ball. We underthrew it, and it's going to cost us big time. We throw the interception, and it leads to a touchdown for Boise State. So that's exactly what we wanted to go ahead and avoid those turnovers that turn into points for the other team you know we're not an explosive offense at least not in terms of the modern college offense spreading the ball around big explosive plays that's just not us man we're grinders we are out here trying to grind things out here as we grind for this first down deandre hughes gonna pick it up for us so at least we avoid going free and out We'll try to get another first down here. First and 10 coming up for us as we'll drop back with Daniels. Trying to throw over the middle and connecting with David Cormier. He picks us a gain of 13. So now we're chilling at the logo of Boise State. Looking to get across Boise State territory for the very first time in this game. And Hazik Daniels. But nobody's open downfield. Got to use the legs. And Daniel certainly did that for his gain of 19. As we look to build off of that with a play action. But facing pressure right away. We got a man though. And Luka makes the catch. DeAndre Hughes. All the way down. To the five yard line. Let's go baby. And we're just a few yards away from going ahead. And tying this up. And if we would have connected. Oh my god, we would have the touchdown there. He was going to walk in. But of course, our linemen get in the way. And instead, a third and goal as we drop back with Daniels again. Looking over the middle. Finding Brandon Lewis in the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. And just in the blink of an eye, we tie things up with the class of this conference. We're all knotted up at seven apiece as... 
that defense of ours is doing its job and giving us some pretty sound field position to work with as well start on the 40 daniels right from the get-go big run down the center of the field and once again we find ourselves in boise state territory trying to get another big play we will settle for a gain of nine in that case is now second and one actually third and short coming up for the group going to try to pass for it full strategy for cotton as they send the blitz one-on-one -on -one though and cormier dave actually micah davis is the one that gets open for us downfield and it gives us another first down chilling in the red zone we'll see if we can pick up yet another first downs we'll drop back with daniels who has to escape the pocket trying to get it out over to brandon lewis but we didn't set that feed in time unfortunately and it does mean that we had to settle for a field goal but hey at the very least though we do at least get the lead to work with as we now hold a three-point lead on the boise state broncos let's we'll see if we can go ahead and make it a two possession affair as we'll go ahead and fake it to Brad Roberts. Pitch it out to DeAndre Hughes on the sideline. He's going to be forced out of bounds. But gets a gain of seven. The first good run for DeAndre Hughes today. He's had a hard time finding some space on the offensive side of the ball. It's this Boise State defense has been electric. It's certainly made things interesting. That's for sure. Definitely gave DeAndre Hughes some fits. And now gonna deal with a third and long all of a sudden we'll see if we can pick up this first down though as we try to throw over to jordan gedry but there just there simply isn't anywhere to go with that football and we had to punt the football away but defense once again doing its job or really uh helping out this team quite a bit actually as daniels we're gonna throw to the left hand side finds kyle patterson but patterson could not get a foot in bounds and so a long incompletion, you absolutely hate to see it. As we throw over to the right-hand side, Jake Spielick makes the catch for us, a gain of 18. As we will use one of our timeouts for right now as we look to continue to push downfield. We're trying to look down the middle of the field, but Daniels getting lit up like a Christmas tree. And so a second and 10 ensues this time. Four-verd set, they don't send the blitz. Daniels over the middle finds the tight end Kyle Patterson and it's good for a gain of 30 we'll use our second timeout but we are getting a nice little drive going to look to add some points before the end of the half Daniels looking around gonna try to escape to the outside bruises the football and it doesn't make it out of bounds wow that is tough we were on the edge of field goal range and we certainly just fumbled the bag right there so now now one silver lining for us here though is that we do at least get the ball to start this second half and we do have a three point lead but we gotta take advantage of it we can't ha consistently lose the turnover battle and expect to win these games and that's exactly what i'm talking about right there another interception this one might be taken to the house will end up being tackled down anyways and just Hazik Daniels just got to know better you know trying to get it out to Jake Spielick he, he was not open he was straight up not open whatsoever and because of that now we don't have the lead now we're playing from behind and this drive for us becomes extremely important because if we don't score and Boise State is able to pad onto this lead, you know, we are not an offense that is built to throw to football. That is just not our MO at the end of the day. We can do it. We're capable of doing it, but we prefer to run it like 80, 90% of the time. And right now, game script not necessarily favoring that as we will fake the pass. Second and 10, looking to get it out to DeAndre Hughes, who actually fights across the first down marker. It's another first down. So now, another goal line situation for the Falcons as we look to take the lead, and we will do just that, baby. Let's go, man. Hazik Daniels able to run it in the end zone off that speed 
option, man. And we're up by three once again. Let's see if we can actually keep the lead this time. As Zeke Daniels looks to build off the touchdown drive. Gets it out to Jordan Guidry. Who spins in his way to the first down. But gets a little bit shaken up in the process. Might have been somebody landing on him on the last second. You know, it can get a little bit ugly sometimes with all the bodies that are piling around. But I think we got DeAndre Hughes. Who is going to get loose. He's got one man with the beat. And he can't get around him though. Oh my goodness. But... That will at least get us in that red zone, though. As we look to build off it, we got some blocks. Daniels gets lit up at the last second. Didn't even see him. Thought we were going to be able to walk this thing into the end zone. But, hey, almost a first down for us. A favorable situation for us. As we look to get the first down. Trying to fight forward with Isaac Daniels. And the officials will give it to us here. And so that being said, goal line situation. Looking to pad this lead. Going to Omar Fada, the backup fullback, baby. Who punches it in the end zone for us. It's another touchdown for Air Force, man. We extend our lead. And we go into this fourth quarter. We're up by 10. Let's see if we can finish this out and get an improved 3-0 start. I would love to see that. Is now. Third and long, Daniels, thrown to the right-hand side, gets it out to DeAndre Hughes on the screen. We don't end up picking up that first down, but that being said, though, the old head coach is going to give us the opportunity to go for it here as we look to pick it up with Kyle Patterson. He fights forward. He stays on his feet and gets that first down. So we can get a little bit more time off the clock if we choose to. We got Boise State right where we want him right now. As Daniels, we're going to throw over the middle, trying to get it. I, I want to say it was for Jordan Gittry, but it was not a great throw. It almost was intercepted. could have been intercepted, but thankfully, it was that was not the case whatsoever. We still have the ball in our hands, and that means we can still get, uh, get a little bit of time off the clock. Let's see if we can pick up this first down, though. As Boise State sends the blitz, trying to get it to Patterson quickly. I thought Patterson was going to win on the inside, but that did not happen. Yet, looks like, I don't know if we, we had like a fake punt or what necessarily happened with that, but I'm not going to really question it, though. We got the ball right back, basically where we started. But can we make something out of it? We haven't been very good on third down. We're 4 for 15 on third down conversions, you guys. It, it just hasn't been working for us and is not going to get much better. 4 and 16 on these third down conversions right now. But, hey, I'm loving that the head coach has given us some faith, man. Letting us go for it on fourth down again. Let's see if we can make it worthwhile. Finds our receiver, Micah Davis. Who makes the big fourth down catch. So now, first and ten coming off the fourth down conversion. Hitting them with the play action. Looking to find the end zone. Didn't quite throw it there. David Cormier had to make an adjustment to that ball. Couldn't do it in time. And so an incompletion makes it second and ten. Daniels pitches it out to DeAndre Hughes. Looking to get past the one defender, but... That one defender slows down Hughes just long enough to make sure that he doesn't end up in the end zone. So now, second and goal. We're going to punch it in. Daniels fighting forward in the end zone. Touchdown. Air Force, baby. The Falcons are flying high in this one, my man. Up by 17 on one of the best teams in this conference. You'll absolutely love to see it. And... It's going to get us a victory, and Hazik Daniels is also going to be named player of the game in the process. Three total touchdowns on the day, and Air Force will end up winning by a final score of 31-21. Good win for our football program, and that does mean we are going to improve to 3-0 on this young season, man. You love to see it.
So it was not always pretty for us whatsoever. I mean, we had free turnovers in this game. That's something that we just can't happen on a daily basis. But we just found a way to win, man. And that was a big win for our program in Mountain West play, beating Boise State the way that we did, pulling away in that second half. We did have over 200 yards on the ground as well as 200 yards passing. So that was really cool to see. 5 for 18 on third down conversion. That's something that we do need to work on a little bit. But overall, we did what we needed to do. We won the time of possession by a long shot. And that was what I was looking for. And it just feels fantastic to win yet another game. Starting off hot here in this dynasty. So like I said before, it certainly was not perfect for us whatsoever. But hey, we find a way to win. That's all that matters. Hazik Daniels. Definitely not his best game. 17 for 34, 188 yards, touchdown, and two picks. It does seem like Charles Vine got in there and ran like a fake punt while we were simulating special teams. It turned out really well. Kept our drive going. Led to a touchdown, I'm pretty sure. So I will gladly take that anytime. The rushing attack, though, we did not have anybody over 100 yards, but we moved the ball around pretty well. We got some players involved in this offense Hazik Daniels led the way 18 carries 81 yards and two tubs to go with it as well DeAndre Hughes had some good carries as well longest play of the season too 44 yard carry ended up with 20 carries 83 yards no touchdowns to go with it though although we did also have one of our fullbacks to get into the end zone as well Omar Fatah now that is quite a name right there. Two carries, 11 yards, and a touchdown to go with it. Stepped in when Brad Roberts did have that concussion. That's why you really didn't see that much of him during the course of his game. And then to round it out, our receivers were pretty busy today. And, you know, they stepped up to the occasion. We did have a couple of drops. It wasn't perfect. But for the fact that we are in a very hostile environment, I thought we did a pretty good job overall. DeAndre Hughes led the team in catching actually five catches 50 yards and receiving yards too I like to see that then we had Micah Davis four catches 39 yards David Cornier three catches 38 yards but none of those guys got into the end zone Kyle Patterson did some good stuff as well Brandon Lewis our star wide receiver he's got that impact star by his name he got the only passing touchdown from Hazard Davis one catch five yards but six points though and it helped lead us to that 3-0 record including 2-0 in conference play but now the question becomes can we avoid a letdown had a big win against Boise State now we got to see if we can do the same thing against Wyoming and on paper Wyoming is pretty similar to us see overall squad just like us except they do have a slightly better offense than we do, but we've been able to get the job done. We got some results, but it's important that we come and play strong in this game. We got an astonishing seven prospects visiting on campus this week. And, you know, if we want them to come to the Air Force Military Academy over a Navy, over an Army, we got to show that we can get the job done on the football field. That military service that we preach here at the Air Force Academy is not going to be enough. So we went 2-0 in the last episode. We'll look to see if we can go 2-0 again. Should still be a good one. And by the way, if you guys are enjoying it right now, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you do happen to be brand new as well, by the way. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get it, baby. Let's go. All right, guys, so the biggest thing that we got to do here, we got to avoid that letdown. We got a big win against Wy uh, Boise State, and we're playing a Wyoming team. They may not be the most talented for sure, but that being said, they are a hungry football team, so we got to avoid that letdown, avoid that upset. Let's just go out there and play Air Force football, you know, as we face some pressure right up the middle, and Hazik Daniels, Gets shaken up. He's not getting off the ground. Might be a leg injury. And until we know his status, Warren Bryan, our backup quarterback, 
is going to come into this game now. And he's going to be playing at that quarterback position for us. And right now, Warren Bryan's not doing so bad. He's not going to, not only going to complete this pass, but this pass as well, which is not an easy thing to do. 33 yards downfield. So Warren Bryan, you know, not phased at all by being able to come in in the middle of this game. As we'll go ahead and get our fullback involved here as well. Brad Roberts, who nearly picks up the first down for us. It's a gain of 10. But it does not necessarily move the sticks for us as Warren Bryan will drop back again. And hey, what is it? I don't know what it is about the tight ends, but Warren Bryan, he's certainly loving his favorite tight end, that's for sure. It's helping us move the ball downfield quite a bit here as we do end up punching it in the end zone. DeAndre Hughes. Making sure that we get ourselves on the board, baby. Touchdown, Air Force. And listen, Wyoming, they got some points on the board first. But we'll go ahead and respond as well. And unlike them, we'll actually make sure that we hit our extra point. So we have a one-point lead in this one. We'll see if Brian can follow that up as well. As Brian, he's actually going to run for it. He makes that linebacker miss. Slides down too. And it's a good thing that he slid because we don't have much depth behind Warren Bryan, right? We got, we are, there's not a lot of talent on this roster. We cannot afford to get hurt. We really cannot have any, as many long sustaining injuries. So it's good that Warren Bryan slid down there. And we're putting together a real good drive still. Brandon Lewis, he's going to get to the outside. He picks up a gain of six off of that jet sweep. We may be an option squad, but hey, playmakers are playmakers at the end of the day. We're going to find a way to get him involved as we face down a third and six. Looking to the right-hand side, we had David Cormier, but just a little bit off target on that out route. It is fourth down, but thankfully for us, head coach is going to let us go for it once again. We got some space to work with. Can we get there? No. DeAndre Hughes on that halfback screen. Cannot reach the first down marker, and it was so close to, but they won't give it to us, and so we give the football back to the Cowboys, but at least for us, though, they could not capitalize off of the turnover on down, so we still hold a narrow lead. Let's see if we can get a second touchdown on the board, though, as we'll hand off to DeAndre Hughes, who fights forward. And picks up a gain of seven up through the gut. Definitely a play action friendly down coming for us here. But like I said, we ain't that pass team, man. We're an option squad. And Warren Bryan certainly knows how to run that. Picking up yet another first down on the ground for us. As it does make it first and ten. Faking the motion to the right hand side. Going with. DeAndre Hughes finding new ways to get him the football. He is explosive when we can get him in that open field. As it does make it yet another first and ten. Brian looking around, looking to find once again his tailback. DeAndre Hughes helping his quarterback out. Knows that the backup's in the game. Know that we're not comfortable passing it. So whenever he can make plays for the quarterback... Certainly welcome and certainly enjoyed. And speaking of playing some plays, how about Jordan Guidry snatching that pitch and picking up a first down for us as well. It sets up yet another goal line situation. We'll see if we can punch it in as Brian will drop back. Looking over, but gets lit up like a Christmas tree. And so Warren Bryant, that's a big shot. I'm surprised he didn't fumble it. And is so shaken up that we have yet another quarterback in the game. This is actually our third stringer, Chance Stevenson. But looking like a vet, though, as he calmly throws that touchdown to Jake Spielick. And Chance Stevenson, you know, making, taking advantage of the fact that he got some action and, you know, got a touchdown. So you love to see those backups stepping up, particularly, you know, at that quarterback position. But it looks like Warren Bryan just kind of had 
the uh, the wind's knocked out of him or something, because he's right back in the game. He's fine. You know, got that stem and ice. He's good to go as we... Oh, I, okay, it was a little weird of a camera angle, but that's fine. Well, we got that first down anyways. Let's see if we can keep it going. This time running a different option play. Got to mix it up a little bit here and run it really well. Get it out to Brandon Lewis. He's got some speed on him, and that super dive might have just saved a touchdown and it leads to yet another third down this time looking to get it to jordan gidry off of the dive play can he fight for for the first down yes sir first down air force and it moves to chains for the falcons as we're on the edge of the red zone is now play action brian looking to the right hand side finds his receiver brandon lewis again this time for a gain of 11, and it sets up basically yet another first and goal situation. I mean, it's technically possible that we can get the first down without scoring here, but it's like on the one-inch line. I'm not trying to risk it for the biscuit. Might as well just try to punch it in the end zone here in these next couple of plays. And speaking of punching it in the end zone, looking to get it out to Jordan Gittery who's got a crease and finds the crease and finds that blue end zone as well another touchdown for Air Force as it gives us a 21 to 14 lead Warren Bryan's not looking too bad even though that that pass that pass definitely looked really bad but overall I've, I've been impressed with what Warren Bryan's been able to do with his offense you know coming in middle of the game as a backup not being phased whatsoever definitely like how he's playing and maybe he is just one of those players that plays a little bit higher than what his overall says you know maybe it's just one of those cases it does happen in ncaa 14 it's not a very uncommon thing it seems like as we do have a second and short coming up let's see if warren bryan can get some good yardage on the option play as Brian, he's got some space. He's taking it up the field and gets across the 20 yard line. Another first down for the Falcons. As we continue to drive down this field, the rushing attack looking explosive for the Falcons as DeAndre Hughes almost finds the end zone. Gonna be just a couple of yards shy, but this has just been a masterful drive. And it would just be just icing on the cake if we can punch it in with our quarterback Warren Bryan another touchdown a little bit of a weight hit though they won't call it an NCAA 14 glad he didn't get hurt off of that I would have been feeling some kind of pettiness in some kind of way in general if he somehow got hurt off of that but another touchdown for Warren Bryan though and we got a commanding lead to work with in the fourth quarter and the ball was in our hands as well and that's exactly where we want to be as a football team because you already know if we can dominate the time possession in the fourth quarter, then nine times out of ten, we're going to win that football game, man. That's certainly what we're trying to do as we go ahead and fake the handoff to our fullback. Warren Bryan, he's got another crease. And, oh, if he was able to get away from those safeties, he was gone because he had green grass right in front of him. But that being said, though, Warren Bryan trying to make the great happen. Getting a little bit cocky there. Wanted to uh, pitch it out to DeAndre Hughes in order to go ahead and maybe get a bunch more yardage because there really wasn't too many defenders between us and the end zone at that point. I'm just glad that it wasn't recovered by the defense at the very least. But, you know, got to be a little bit more careful, you know. We got to take what the defense gives us sometime, and Hughes just gets lit up like a Christmas tree. Oh, my goodness. What a hit by Rome Weber. He just, I'm surprised that he didn't get knocked out cold from that, but, hey, fourth and short. We're going to go for it here, trying to pick up the sticks. Brian going to hand it off to Jordan Gittery, who picks up the first down, and some more, too. Finally, we will get dropped across the 25-yard line. So you love to see that as we try to pick up yet another first down. It's a third and long. We got to deal with David Cormier with yet another catch. He goes for a first down. Is now second and six coming. Going to go ahead, hand it off. No, it's a fake to DeAndre Hughes, but 
That does end up be being snuffed out by Keon Blankenbacher. That is a name right there. That's why I love playing with these rosters. Because you get some real names. Get the real players in the game. While we're waiting for EA College Football to make sure that it's ready to go. You know, because if, if EA College Football is not where it needs to be, you know. You already know we as a NCAA community is going to riot. But Warren Bryan actually gets named player of the game. Ends up with... About 200 yards of total offense and ends up getting in the end zone through the ground. And even though we didn't have our starting quarterback for the vast majority of this game, we do end up winning pretty convincingly against Wyoming, winning 31 to 14. All right, y'all. So another game in the books, and it was a thing of beauty. You know, not only did we get that win, that's always the most important thing, of course. But we also ran the option for a thing of beauty, especially when you have more than 70 plays and almost 60 of them were rushing plays. 58 carries, 319 on three tubs. Passing, we weren't bad either. 10 for 15, one touchdown to go with it as well. We were clean with the football. We did not turn the football over this time around. And that helped our team, man, to help give us a pretty convincing win against wyoming i would say seven for 14 on third down one for two on fourth down conversions it was a pretty good performance i still think we can play a tad bit better but we are winning the time of possession that's really helping our defense out really giving us the maximum amount given the talent that is on this roster so i had for us uh for individual guys here today it was a really unique day Seeing as we did have three different quarterbacks come in, we started out with Hazik Daniels, who did start the game for us. He only threw one pass, wasn't a completion, actually got hurt early. Then we turned to Warren Bryan for the rest of the game because Hazik Daniels got hurt. And Warren Bryan was pretty good, 9 for 13, 115 yards, almost had 100 yards on the ground too. And then... He got shaken up a little bit, so now our third string quarterback had to come in. Chance Stevenson, the junior product out of Akron. And the one pass, the one play that he was in there, he was good. One pass, one touchdown. I mean, you can't complain with that result. As for the running game, though, the running game, we almost had 200-yard rushers. We had DeAndre Hughes, who had 27 carries, 122 yards, and a sub. Warren Bryan was almost there too. He had 99 yards. If we gave him just one more carry, he would have had it. But I mean, we got to take it easy towards the end of these games sometimes, you know. Not that petty, at least not this early in the coaching career. Jordan Gidry did also end up finding the end zone as well. He had eight carries for 37 yards. For the receivers, I mean, what is there really to say? We don't pass the football all that much, but. That being said, Jake Spiewak, the Centerville product, six foot four, 200 pounds, was a big target for our first string Q to B, Chance Robinson, as he has the only passing touchdown of the day. He had two catches for 18 yards. Nobody else had more than two catches, although one thing I will say, Kyle Patterson was a pretty good target for us when we did target him, two targets for two catches for 50 yards he led all air force receivers in that regard so with that great performance against the wyoming cowboys we do end up seeing our first commits as not only the offensive coordinator for air force but also the recruiting the guy that handles all the recruiting we get free commits to join the squad we got Bo monroe we get alfred holy cross a center and then over at that middle linebacker position, we got Warren's Hodge. So nice little recruiting class that we're starting to build. We got three guys coming to the squad. I'm certainly really excited for it. Can't wait to see what they can bring to the table. So I'm really surprised. Well, I wouldn't say really surprised, but I'm pleasantly happy, I would say, with how we're doing so far. 4-0 to start our coaching career. I mean, you can't really ask for much more than that at the end of the day but we can't keep looking forward we got to look at what's in front of us right now we have to focus up 
on the Nevada Wolfpack. They're a solid football team now, 3-1 so far. They got Carson Strong, who is considered an NFL prospect. So, hey, it's going to be a really interesting episode. I'm excited for it. If you're excited for it as well, make sure you hit that like button and hit me up down in the comments down below. And then on top of that, if you're brand new to the channel, man, you made it all the way to the end of this video, hit that subscribe button. I know there's 75% of you guys right now watching this video that have not subscribed so help a brother out it's free you can always unsubscribe if you're not feeling me but with that being said this is john chick gaming on the mic signing off but i'm hoping you're all out there having a good one take care everybody